Um, well, uh, very happy to be here, guys. Uh, I'm with Basic Swap. I'm here to show you guys um, the Atomic Swap Dex, the, the Atomic Swap Swap based Dex that we um, have uh, right now. We presented something last year as well. We sort of uh, went through the history of Atomic Swaps. Um, Luke talked a little bit about Atomic Swaps from Monero. And uh, in, the, in the past year, we uh, did some progress with the uh, open source decks. And uh, I'm just here to sh sort of catch you guys up to speed. If you're not familiar with Basic Swap, hopefully you'll be uh, more familiar after this speech. Um, so quite simply, um, Basic Swap is, um, you could say, um, two things. It's, uh, a, 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 it enables adapter signature swaps for XMR and other coins like Ethereum, uh, not Ethereum, sorry, for Bitcoin, Litecoin, uh, coins like Faro and Dash as well. Uh, we'll have our friends from Wow Nero soon integrate into the DEX. We'll also have uh, our friends at Decred. And um, so the, how the, the, this presentation is going to go, the structure of it would be uh, we'll have the functions and the GUI of basic swap itself, the application. Um, the under the hood, uh, you could separate it pretty cleanly between the adapter signature swaps and the SMSG network, which is sort of the backbone of how you achieve a decentralized communication that enables the uh, um, swaps to happen. And what's gonna be ahead as far as the roadmap for the, for the decks and where we're going with all of that. So, um, to understand basic swap, I think it's it's pretty uh, useful to sort of separate it in two ideas. Uh, it's it's first of all it's a protocol. It's an open source protocol. It's not monetized, um, and it's currently supporting seven coins with two more that uh, mentioned earlier coming up. Um, and it's um, the the ideas behind the atomic swaps when it was created. It's very much about decentralization. It's about privacy. The adapter signature swap, particularly. And we, we want to really make a DEX that's comprehensive, remains true to um, those, those um, ideas that we all support here, of course. Uh, but it's also an application. Um, and it uh, could, could be seen in some ways as, uh, and that's the, the application is what most people here might be familiar with if you've already sort of played or been familiar with or came to the workshop yesterday as far as basic swap goes. So that's the, the, the GUI you've already seen. Um, and it's, it's first of all a wallet in the sense, it's not first of all a wallet, but it could be understood as a wallet in the sense that you have all those coins that you wish to trade. For every coin that you wish to trade, you do have to run a node. And so if you already use a node, if you already operate your own node for Monero, for other coins that you're using, and you wish to do an atomic swap between those two coins, and you already have a node, it's very, it's, you, you, you don't have to go through the hassle of re-downloading that node if you want to use basic swap, you can already sort of, it's a little finicky right now, we're still very much in beta, even in alpha, but you can plug that into the basic swap protocol, into the basic swap application to make those um, atomic swaps work for you. It can be used as an OTC service, um, and you'll see later, I'll, I'll show you guys more what it looks like. It, it could be seen as a big, large OTC desk, um, and it, 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 does, it, it, it doesn't function as an AMM at all. It, there's, a, there's an order book to it, but it's, um, it's not an order book that you necess necessarily associate with a site like Binance or something like that. So it's a very unique sort of uh, approach on how to, to do secure private swaps between to on-ramp onto Monero or off of Monero or to even have um, private and, and secure trades between something like Bitcoin and uh, another privacy coin like Monero. So it can bring a lot of privacy to Bitcoin as well. Um, so yeah, um, so a lot of people that, that are passionate about those things are gonna find maybe something they, 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 they're looking for in basic swap. Uh, we don't have KYC, uh, of course, there's no accounts. Um, and the, the, the adapter signature swap is a very interesting um, piece of, uh, of cryptography in that um, there is no chain of custody when you achieve that. Uh, there's, it's a very private, very um, elegant software and a wall software piece of cryptography, and it's, it's, uh, it powers most of the swaps on the, on the DEX right now. Um, so there's different reasons why we went the atomic swaps route. Uh, first of all, maybe 
Um, when we started development of Basic Swap, there wasn't really an idea of um, uh, what our competition was as far as people that were all in the same boat right now fixing the problem of what do we do when XMR and other privacy coins can't live adequately on centralized exchanges with all the regulations and the cramping, crack, crank, cracking down on privacy coins. So it was mostly, you know, a year and a half, two years ago about addressing that very uh, toxic reality when it comes to uh, privacy coins and, and how more, more and more difficult it is right now to, to, to swap them. We went the atomic swap route. Uh, so with atomic swaps, there's drawbacks, there's positives. Um, you don't have any third parties, obviously. So, you know, two of two exchange atomic swaps are. Uh, you don't have arbiters, and uh, there's there's also very few moving part in the protocol of basic swap itself, but also when it comes to uh, adapter signature swaps also, uh, as well. In that, um, it's a very elegant process. Very little can go wrong, and it's already sort of um, the the hard part was really the the very smart people um, that came and that invented the the atomic swap, the adapter signature atomic swap. I'm thinking here of um, Fournier and uh, Hashed, uh, maybe worked with Parker uh, to, to have, because I know he, he had a background in creating, and uh, he has a white paper on the XMR atomic swap. Um, so there's uh, no intermediate coins, no no wrapped asset e assets either. It is it is slower than an MMM index, and we also have uh, different challenges when it comes to liquidity than a DEX like Serai or, or something like, um, it may be more similar to, to, to Havino when it comes to liquidity in some sense, but I, I, I'm not extremely familiar with Havino to be honest. Um, and there's, yeah, no conflict resolution to contend with. This is all already sort of baked in into the idea of the atomic swap itself. Um, and we'll go back on the SMSG aspects, but the, the, the keeping everything private and end-to-end -end encrypted and decentralized and resilient. This is all in the spirit of, of I think, in, in part what we're all here for today, but also in, this, in the spirit of what an adapter signature swap is all about to begin with. And uh, there's no public swap history or anything of that nature. Um, so when we decided to do an atomic swap DEX, uh, one of the first things we thought was we, we really want XMR in there. XMR is a uh, very large, um, it's, it's the largest privacy coin, it's private by default, sort of the authority a little bit on uh, what a privacy coin is right now in the space. And even if you try to shut it down, it's still a very highly liquid uh, privacy coin. And if, if a single coin can um, sort of stand up to the um, attacks on, on privacy that, that crypto is facing right now, it probably is XMR. Um, but uh, the, 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 the XMR swap doesn't respond well to the original at atomic swap. So that's where the adapter signature swap sort of comes from. Uh, it's, it's a semi-scriptless protocol, and I'll go a little bit into that, but I don't want to um, uh, delve into that too hard. As I mentioned earlier, if you're, fam if you're interested in, in more technical uh, breakdown of how this uh, adapter signature swap, what it entails, why is it scriptless or semi-scriptless, this ex excellent paper by Fournier. Fournier um, made it happen on ECDSA curves, and then Hashed made it happen from Fournier to Monero. So if you are interested in sort of the, the, the to read an academic paper, and I, I do recommend it because it is beautiful stuff. And again, there's drawbacks, but is um, a, a very, very great piece of, of uh, cryptography that those great intelligence people uh, offered for us. Um, so to have a very quick uh, sort of rundown of what does a happy path look like when you use basic swap to do an adapter signature swap. So this is just simply an adapter signature swap, pointing to the wrong, uh, the wrong screen here. Um, so the, the first thing is, um, and why I called it semi-scriptless early, er, earlier, is you do need Bitcoin or, or Litecoin or, or the, the counterparty coin that you're using to, to swap in or out of Monero to uh, handle some things for you if you want to have a successful swap. And some of those things are the refund transactions, uh, the, the timeout transaction, uh, not transaction, but the, the, to, to enable a timeout, uh, some, some typical smart contract 
elements that Monero is simply not capable capable of, as as it's a very it's a much more rigid uh, uh, piece of software. And um, so this is sort of what the um, the the flow of the trade kind of looks like. Um, something that is interesting and, and important to note that sort of makes it happen is how um, when when Bob redeems his one Bitcoin. Um, and again, I, I very much encourage you to, to go uh, and, and look at, and our, our speech last year actually went into that in more detail. It was mostly about atomic swaps and adapter signatures. But the idea being when, when Bob redeems his one Bitcoin after both contracts are funded, he leaks half the private key to Alice, who has the other half in her back pocket. So the act of Bob redeeming, and that's a terrible trade, one Bitcoin for one XMR, but I guess he really wants it. Um, it, it, the act of redeeming that one Bitcoin makes it so Alice is now capable of redeeming her XMR. And if you can sort of infer what that means is there's really no, um, no, there's nothing in the fact that Bob redeemed his Bitcoin and leaked half of a private key in, on the Bitcoin network that um, associates it with Alice at any point or any given moment. So the, the, the chain of custody is extremely um, obfuscated, and I, I would say it's even un, unex, non-existent. Um, where, whereas, so that's the, sort of the Bitcoin side and the, the, the two shards side. Monero is, um, as there's no smart contract, again, it's, 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 uh, it's, a, it's a simpler process for Monero, and there's no... Uh, having to contend as far as all the the signing the, the pre-signing the, the refund transactions or, or anything like that so it's just to, to sort of have a very quick overview on the technical aspects of what does an, an adapter signature swap actually look like um, and this is not something we developed this is just something that we used to uh, integrate into something that we're trying to make into a comprehensive privacy first dex that um, sort of answers some of the needs that XMR and other privacy coins have in this space right now. So um, as I mentioned, Bitcoin must go first. Uh, so when Fournier did that thing, uh, his paper, a big, a big issue he had and something that we mentioned last year, we went, also mentioned it at Monerotopia in, uh, in Mexico last year, is um, only the, the, the Bitcoin side could offer a trade and that's part. That's an issue at the center of the adapter signature swap for XMR. And the the way we sort of circumvented that, and we did that, we did that in the last eight months, and we were very happy to to finally get that out. Is we use the decentralized order book, and the, the decentralized order book. I'm going to start talking about a little more in a second because again, the two things make up this dex: the adapter signature swap and SMSG. And the order book is, is, is very much a, a product of SMSG and the di dissemination of, of data that this SMSG enables this private and decentralized way. So to fix this bidirectional swap problem, we use the decentralized order book to allow swap requests to populate the order book. And this might not make that much sense right now, but this is what it looks like. Um, so this is a picture of, of the order book as it is at the moment. And the swaps that you see at the top and that you can take with the blue button on the right, the swaps that you see at the top are um, swaps that a Monero user initiated. And they look exactly the same except for the order of things as the swaps at the bottom, which are regular adapter signature swaps. Here, you, you, offer, or you have this offer, hey, give me Monero and I'll give you Bitcoin and you can swap. So the, 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 Monero, the Bitcoin side initiated this and you as the user have, do you have the Monero for this Bitcoin? Do you like this deal? You can swap it. The, the, the five items at the top, they are reversed atomic swaps uh, in the sense that it, it is really displayed as an, it is displayed as a swap, but it is really, it was put up as a, as a you could call it a swap request. So it's kind of a, it's a little bit of a hack, or it's it's a creative way to use the SMSG network and the order book to be able to 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 achieve a bidirectionality that is very important if you want to make it worth it for you to swap your XMR in or out, and and not always have as a as an XMR user you won't always have to sort of um, be 
uh, in the situation where you also, we always have to take somebody else's offer and somebody else's conditions as to like how they, they offer you the swap. So that was a very important step for, for basic swap to make it a lot more accessible um, and, and a lot more realistic to use for XMR holders that don't just get on there and they're bound to take somebody else's swap all the time. Um, so that's, that was something we were very happy with. To briefly um, go over secure messaging, SMSG is um, the other half of basic swap. As we sort of saw, th this, is, this order book is all powered by SMSG. The adapter signature swap is, is a protocol that's um, very complex and it involves a lot of back and forths between the Bitcoin side, say, and the XMR side, say. And all of this back and forth needs to be handled in a way that remains true to the spirit of the atomic, the adapter signature swap to begin with. So what that looks like is, uh, it was inspired by BitMessage. It's a mixnet that um, uses peer-to-peer -peer messaging to, to enable a, a sort of data layer for basic swap and make it the backbone of, of how the trades, how people find each other on, on, the, on the, the swap platform, how you get to enable a swap and to, to find some, oh, okay, I like this guy's order, I'm taking it. All of that is, is, works in the background on the basis of this peer-to-peer -peer network. This is a, a little bit of a graph as far as uh, how um, SMSG could be thought of. It's uh, every, every person that runs a basic swap node is running an SMSG node. And that means they are constantly disseminating, taking in and, take, and putting out encrypted messages. Uh, every message is encrypted, and, and if you think of a, a public message on basic swap, it is public by virtue of everybody having the decryption key. So literally everything that happens on the SMSG network is end-to-end -end encrypted, and it's, uh, it's made to be highly resistant, sort of like torrents, highly resistant to, to being shut down, but also highly resistant to chain analysis and uh, uh, to, to things like... Um, uh, any sort of, of action that would want to take the network down, it is very resilient with regards to that. Um, so, simply put, um, I think I mentioned most of that. Uh, yeah, and this is this is one example that you know the, the order book I mentioned. I mentioned the fact that the um, XMR swap, bidirectional swap, is enabled by the fact that you can post something like that on the order book through SMSG. That all happens on the back end. On the front end, it's, it's a lot more straightforward. I don't know if, if some of you might have seen the workshop yesterday. Uh, we, we sort of went through um, every different aspect of what the, the DEX looks like. Um, how do you use the wallets? How do you use, uh, how do you post the swap? How do you want to add a coin? I only have, I, st I only started the thing with four coins and I want to add a fifth one. All of that is, is um, it's also available in, in documentation, of course. Um, but there's other things that this SMSG network does to, to create this comprehensive uh, uh, ad 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 adapter signature swap platform. Um, so you, you exchange and, and fetch data with it. Uh, you can automate swaps with it. There's, there's very rudimentary right now uh, liquidity tools that we already have available, but that's very much in beta. And it's an alpha, actually. It's, it's, it's not even in, in, in beta at all. And we, um, the, the way that works and the way this, this is sort of in, uh, interacting with the network is through SMSG as well. Um, the order book itself, of course, something we're very excited about that hasn't come yet, but that we think we can do really, really cool stuff with is identities and private order books. Uh, this might come in, uh, sort of um, come address something that uh, Mr. Parker was asked earlier with regards to tainted coins. Uh, this is, again, I, I, I loved Parker's reply to that question in, in that uh, it is very much an agnostic approach. But if you want to uh, take upon an identity or a private order book where you trust the person that has that identity and that you know, okay, this is relating to a guy that consistently offers coins that are not tainted and maybe he charges a premium for it, uh, but it's worth it because it's what you want and you want to do it through an atomic sw an adapter signature swap, that's perfect. So that's the kind of stuff that we want to see uh, going forward. Um, I mentioned that. Um, 
there's yeah there's also some some uh there, there's been some confusion i've seen on the forums before uh none of this is monetized at all smsg is not monetized everything is open source uh please fork it uh but if you if even if you if you uh just uh, contribute and, and and make it easier to use you're just contributing in my in my view and in the view of people that work on this project and are passionate about it to the health of privacy coins in general and of XMR by, by extension. So there's, uh, yeah, just to mention also, there's some proof of work involved with SMSG. It's not something that's very noticeable when you use basic swap normally, but if you're trying to DDoS it or, or abuse the network, you'll notice it pretty quick. Um, and as of now, you know, um, we're, we're sort of dipping our toes into an SMSG too. But as it is right now, SMSG can handle a, a very large caseload of, uh, of, of orders when it comes to, to, um, to how many users, cons consecutive users would we need to really bottleneck the thing at the moment. It's a lot. It would be thousands and tens of thousands as of right now. And it's not something that we realistically think we're going to reach in the next couple months. But we also have uh, SMSG2 planned up. This is just uh, to mention that uh, a higher level of scalability might be needed to sort of bring this thing rolling into something that is, you know, a lot bigger. And even though the, 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 there's drawbacks and, and, and positives to atomic swaps themselves, we think it can definitely become something that's more of a mainstream approach to swapping coins, especially if privacy and security and the resilience of the network you're trading on is something that's very important for you as it is for us. So, um, quite quickly as well, um, we, we, we like to have this thing as a modular uh, sort of piece of software. If you want to integrate it, we want to see it integrated, and we're working on having it integrated in different things. Uh, and part of the roadmap, we would like to see in, in time uh, light wallets and, and remote services. Uh, this is maybe a little further than uh, more coins, something like uh, Elizabeth's uh, Newt. I don't know if you guys uh, uh, were familiar with her Ethereum XMR atomic swap uh, protocol. Something that would be we'd be interested in, and we're looking into adding to the to the basic swap platform. Uh, Web gateway, of course, would be pretty cool, and it's something we're seriously working on. And uh, as long as it, it's alive, and as long as it remains this decentralized open source protocol and application. It will, remain, it will remain non custodial and uh, true to the principles of atomic swaps in general. So, thank you very much. This was uh, just a. Um, All right. I think we have time for one or, one or two questions. Cause